Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. The long wait is over. It's finally arrived. The full Comic-Con trailer has apparated online and it's filled with tantalizing new images to inspire several fan theories. I'm Susan Chappelle with Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. First, a heads up. I'm only covering the new material in this trailer, not the scenes or clues that were shown or covered before. For those, please check out my playlist linked above and in the description below. And also, be sure you don't click away before the end of the video because I'm giving away an adorable Noble Collection Niffler. So let's start off with yesterday's Comic-Con poster that teased fans waiting expectantly for the trailer. I spent several hours digging out all the clues with other fans online, and here are the main things we noticed. The first that jumped out at me was the symbol over Queenie's head. At first, I thought it was a swastika superimposed on the Deathly Hallows. Several people, so I can't credit one, pointed out that it seemed to be the initials GG back to back. So Grindelwald has his own symbol now. And I do think it's meant to evoke both the swastika and that symbol beside Lorena Kama's name on the Lestrange family tree that we've been analyzing. Notice, too, that the elder one is pointed down, as we discussed in a prior video as well. Couple this symbol with the fact that it's over Queenie's head, and she, with her back turned to not only Jacob, but the other three, supports strongly my theory yesterday that she may be working with Grindelwald to save Jacob's life. Also, notice as pointed out by Porpatina's wand that the other three are facing the same direction, aligned under Dumbledore, while Queenie is aligned under Grindelwald. Then there are the buildings around the edges. Dumbledore is above Hogwarts. Credence and Maledictus are below the circus. Thesis and Lita, below Trafalgar Square, as picked up by the fan site Fantastic Beast film series, and Grindelwald is above the French Ministry of Magic. The three others seem to be near something they are linked to. Does this mean Grindy will infiltrate the French Ministry of Magic, perhaps using Queenie to do so? At the top of the poster is, the fate of one will change the future of all. I believe this is in reference to Credence and the extraordinary power he possesses as an obscurial. We're already seeing that he's learning to control and transform his power. And Ezra Miller has mentioned in an interview that Credence is becoming aware of the growing power inside him. Please check out my theory on Credence as the atomic bomb for more on that one. Then there's a snake that winds around the whole poster. Could it be a reticulated python, the world's longest snake? The snake pictured is really long and the diamonds on its back seem similar. A prior image of the Maledictus release said she was from Indonesia. Where these pythons live. Many of you know I've never been fond of the Maledictus becomes Nagini theory, and if Maledictus is the snake girl is a reticulated python, then Maledictus is not Nagini, as Nagini was a viper. And finally we come to Jacob, who is carrying an umbrella. Does this hint at the rain as an important element shown in several scenes? I theorized in yesterday's video that the rain is a key clue as to how Jacob arrived at Newt's place in England. One of the most curious objects to emerge from the trailer is this skull. What in the world can it be? As noted by Suvi Holm, it definitely seems to be the same image at the top of the screenplay cover, and as noted by both Suvi and Ross Nicholson, it also seems to be the object Rosier is holding in that amphitheater scene. Notice the cord draped over her arm. As I theorized when doing the analysis of the screenplay cover earlier, it's indeed an object linked to Grindelwald and is not the dark mark, though it may have inspired it. But what in the world is this thing? With such short time to research, I can only make guesses, but I think this skull combines at least three concepts. First, it may be a physical, if slightly morbid, link to Grindelwald's heritage. A village in Austria has an unusual historic cemetery called the Hallstatt Charnel House. 
in a small building near a 12th century chapel for a couple of hundred years, the villagers reinterred their dead after they decomposed. While it may sound a bit grotesque, the family members decorated the skulls of their loved ones with designs signifying their life as well as their names and date of birth. Some of the designs, especially the writing and dates, look very similar to Grindelwald's skull. Could this skull be an ancestor to Grindelwald, or perhaps an important historical witch or wizard that has been held onto for some purpose? The belief would be that the skull is not only contains some of the ancestor's power, but also forms a bond with the person holding it. After all, skull worship or reverence was practiced by many cultures as a way to maintain a family bond and keep a loved one near. Which leads us to another great catch by Ross. He posted earlier today that the words on the skull, though hard to make out, may be German for the greater good, which may indicate where Grindelwald got his slogan. However, whether the wording is for the greater good or the name and death date of a significant person, my interpretation is still the same. As I stated in a prior video, when the screenplay cover was revealed, I believe this skull has been trepanned. Boring into the skull is an ancient medical procedure to cure head ailments, or done, in this case, to let out what were considered to be demons. Consider the possibility that the owner of the skull was a witch or wizard living in a time when their powers were feared. Could the local muggles have trepanned the person for the greater good of the village? Okay, so here's where my ideas start getting a bit weird, weirder. I've been trying to figure out why that hose or pipe is attached to the skull. I searched for any trepan skulls with hoses attached, but found nothing. So I'm guessing this may be something of Rowling's creation. The style of that pipe and the way it is attached make me think of the Turkish nargile or hookah in other countries, a traditional water pipe used for smoking and there's definitely a smoke-like substance inside that skull. What if Grindelwald has been using the pipe to inhale whatever magical properties are inside the skull? I know that sounds a bit off the wall, but the implements around the skull hint to me at a medical purpose, the scissors and bowls and dark bottles that look almost medicinal. What if he has an ailment or an injury and is using the skull for medical magic? When Grindelwald sticks the Elder Wand into one of the holes of the skull, I think he's doing one of two things, or both. He could be absorbing the power that lies within the skull onto the Elder Wand, or he could also be manipulating or implanting a false memory into the skull. Which leads to the scene in the amphitheater where Rosier is probably holding that skull. What I think is happening here is that Grindelwald is using the skull of a famous witch or wizard in history who was tortured by muggles to persuade an audience of influential and wealthy people toward his cause. Perhaps the skull will even somehow magically speak, sharing the atrocities that was done to them, perhaps real and perhaps manipulated even worse by Grindelwald. Now, on to the trailer. The trailer starts with Dumbledore teaching a lesson on Bogarts with Pottermore confirming that he's teaching this as a defense against the dark arts class, which we've already discussed in a prior video, does not oppose canon. The thing that catches my attention here is this girl standing behind Newt. Are we seeing a young Lita Lestrange? She looks particularly disturbed and afraid of facing the Bogart. What trauma could lurk in her past? Perhaps something more sinister than an office job. Up next is more of the scene from the first trailer with the moving statue. Suri Holm and I were both thrilled to see our theory confirmed that the statue was indeed moving and that Tina may very well be escaping into a secret passage it reveals. In this image that follows, we see Credence gazing upon the circus poster back in New York. Forgive me for crowing a bit, but nearly a year and a half ago, I was the first to spot this poster hanging on a building in the first film and theorized that Credence would run away to join the circus in the second. I believe this is the moment it happens and that it is the maledictus 
the snake girl who captures his attention, bound up inside a beast, just as he is. We then get an inside view of Grindelwald being moved through the Macusa prison on his way to being extradited to Europe and his escape. I've been harping on how I believe Abernathy will be a new recruit for Grindelwald and key to his escape, and this poster, released today with the trailer, seems to confirm it. Then we see the black shape swooping down on Newt and Tina that, at first glance, would seem to be Credence's Obscurus. After all, we did see him shooting it out from the rooftop of a Paris building, and that's possibly what it is. However, the form and texture of this image seems different. It's more fluid and less smoky than the Obscurus. Also, notice how it covers the buildings as it moves. And then there's this thing here that seems to be a face. I'm wondering if this could be a Dementor. Notice how Tina is reacting as it approaches, as if she's cold and upset. Remember that Dementors affect some people more than others. Tina's reaction could hint at past trauma in her life. I know this doesn't look like the Dementors of Harry Potter, but that could be for a couple of reasons. One, different filmmakers and different time periods. Or two, and more scary, what if Grindelwald has been experimenting with them, perhaps combining a Dementor with a Leatherfold? We've known Grindelwald has visions, but we get a hint of a big one here, one that involves credence that he would rise in dominance over the wizarding world. Sounds like Grindelwald, doesn't it? Or as Subi asks, is it Credence? Perhaps the two united. And is Grindelwald trying to get Credence to fly to his arm there, like a bird, a raven, or a crow? I believe this woman is Mellison, who we've discussed in a prior video. And then these are the black cats that were mentioned in the CinemaCon trailer, but they definitely don't appear to be wampus cats to me. They seem faintly demonic. I'm wondering, since Rowling is exploring some French legends, if these could be Madagot cats, which are known to be very faithful to their master, but also possess the ability to pass between realms, which those eyes surely suggest. We see Newt taking an unarmed glove by hand to meet Dumbledore on top of St. Paul's, which plays into the port key clues that we've been exploring. Perhaps the image that surprised me most was Dumbledore gazing in the mirror of Erised with Grindelwald behind him. As a parallel to Harry gazing upon the family that he'd lost, Dumbledore yearns for the one man who was perhaps his equal. Rowling has said that Dumbledore's intellect made him a very lonely man. This image contrasts with Harry's belief that Dumbledore would see his family reunited in the mirror, whereas as a younger man, Dumbledore clearly misses the loss of romantic love more. This scene makes more poignant the words Dumbledore would say years later, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. We get Dumbledore's familiar line, I can't move against Grindelwald, it has to be you, but this time with a slightly new perspective and picture. But what could that symbol which Newt is holding mean? I think it's a combination of the alchemy symbols for the Sun and Mercury, or Venus, Grindelwald and Dumbledore as one, that Grindelwald must have given D Dumbledore as a teen, and he has held on to ever since. This new perspective of the dancer makes me more convinced than before that she is Lorena Kama, and that seems to be Theseus standing just behind her. This scene confuses me a bit, but I'm wondering if coupled with young Newt riding the Kelpie, if we're seeing what led to Newt's expulsion. This water scene could take place at the Hogwarts boathouse that featured in the Deathly Hallows film, where Snape died. See young Newt riding in to save the day right there? Another surprise, the vault that we've been analyzing is housed within the French Ministry of Magic, which would indicate what Queenie is after. Also, Newt, Tina, and Lita are joined together in retrieving it. I'm guessing Lita might have some inside knowledge. This location makes it doubtful that the vault is a hiding spot for Grindelwald, as I previously theorized, but it could still contain records of his crimes. We see Tina saving Jacob, 
and Queenie overcome with the emotions and thoughts of those she's hearing and perhaps has harmed. I think with this image and this one, we're getting hints of the rising tension and the mobilizing of Grindelwald's followers building to the final showdown, which seems to take place in the graveyard and include a dragon, just as we theorized earlier, just not a corporal beast. Could it be a Patronus? Would a Patronus act that way? Or is it some sort of fire dragon, some magic we've not heard about? Finally, I think we may get a peek at Grindelwald's accomplice, bringing him the Elder Wand. Notice in this scene, when Grindelwald is in control of the carriage, holding the Elder Wand, his coat sleeve is rolled up a bit, with the grayish prison uniform showing quite a bit. However, in this image of the hand holding the Elder Wand, it seems nicely tailored, with just a bit of white shirt sleeve showing. Furthermore, as caught by the extremely sharp-eyed Subi Holm, this person is watching the Thestral coach, barely visible down below. Is this Grindelwald's accomplice bringing his wand to him? Abernathy, anyone? All I can say of Nicholas Flamel is that I can't wait to see more of him. Plus, this confirms that this newly released image is taken inside Flamel's lab. As animals ran out of the zoo in FB1, perhaps they've been released from the circus in FB2, because this one seems to be the Oni pictured on the circus banner. However, I didn't think Oni had tails, but it definitely has a tusk. Newt's attempts to placate it doesn't seem to be working well. How will he persuade it into his open trunk? What part of the new trailer excited you the most? Do you have a different idea about that skull? And are you counting the days to November 16th? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for books and Funko Pops and wands and all things Fantastic Beasts. But for now, don't click off yet because the Niffler giveaway is on the next screen. Now for the fun part. To celebrate the release of the second trailer, I'm giving away this adorable plush Noble Collection Niffler to one of this vlog's subscribers. Entry is simple. All you have to do is subscribe, click the bell notification, and comment on the video below. That's it. Anyone around the world can enter, so be aware that it may take longer for the Niffler to find his way home to you. The deadline for entry is August 4, 2018. For a description of the Niffler and a full list of how this giveaway will work, see the description box below.